Anyway, my next guest rose to fame in the Harold and Kumar movies. He now stars in a new series, Designated Survivor. Please welcome Cal Penn. <laughs> I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Thanks for being here Good. for the live show. Thank you for having me for a live show. That's exciting. Now, you, we've met a couple times before. We never really talked that Correct. much before. Correct. Yeah. I ran into you uh, at the president's party. Yes. That was very nice. Yes. That was nice. And before yeah. that, I ran into you at a, um, a tribute to Neil Patrick Harris on Broadway. Really? Yes. Which was before that. I remember Did this we story. do a musical number on no, stage or something you, like that? No, but you... I was very... This was very exciting for me, because I was talking to somebody, and you came in backstage... And you had this card with you, and you just you went. Is, t tell me if this is funny. Is this funny? And I thought for sure you thought I was somebody else. And I was like, oh, Stephen Colbert is not asking me if something is funny. It was amazing. Why would so not? Why would not? It was fun. It was cool. Harold and Kumar goes to White Castle. It was funny. I didn't You're write funny. it though. Thank you. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. You got you know funny. Was it funny? Was it funny? The thing I said. Uh, was it funny? I don't remember what it was, but it was funny. I remember it being funny. Good enough. Yeah. I don't care. I remember it being very funny. Okay. Now, leading into the debate, were you uh, were you nervous before the debate started? I wouldn't say I was nervous. I was more like I was curious. Um, That's what a guy who was really nervous exactly, says after he absolutely. calms down. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course I was nervous. I think I was nervous because you uh, you don't know what either of them are going to say, particularly Trump, right? And I and I wanted to give him a shot. Uh, did you? I did. I'll tell you why. I have a lot of Republican friends who espouse some very conservative... Uh -huh. I wanted to hear some what they Some of my best said. friends are Republican. Well, no, I'm not going to say that, but... <laughs> But and I, I heard him, you know, he was, he was talking... I couldn't tell whether he was talking about a tax on something sometimes, he was talking about taxing, or if he was talking about a tax, like, on, on ISIS. And then... <laughs> but then I realized he doesn't have a plan for either, so it didn't really matter. And then that's, that's when I was just sort of watching for fun. All right. Uh, was there anything? Well, okay, look, come on. You worked for the Obama White House. I did. So I'm a little biased here. You were a little more than a little biased <laughs> yeah. here. Was there anything that he could have said that could have swayed a Cal Penn? I don't think so. I think when you talk about cutting funding for education and deporting guys like Harold and Kumar, I, I can't really get behind you. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't. I know. I, think, I hate to tell you, yeah. I think Harold's okay with him. <laughs> I think Kumar's a much bigger problem for him. I think that's probably fair. By the way, Harold yeah. Kumar, great movies. I do I legally have to ask you, are you high right now? Uh, I am not. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Oh. Just... <laughs> now, uh, as I said before, we're just going to check the, you know, we're going to check sure, the record yeah. later. Yeah. Um, um, Is that what the you... P-test was for? <laughs> what, the P-test? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you know you're sworn in before here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I plagiarism. If you lie on a late night show, it's plagiarism. Can I go back? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. What if I and it's live, that? too. You can't change <laughs> anything. So you did work at the Obama White House, which is really fascinating. You were already a working actor, and you went, I'm going to stop for a while and go do something in public service. Why did you do that? Uh, I had a lot of friends who were serving overseas in, in Iraq and buddies who couldn't afford college, and, and uh, I just thought, you know, um, just like a lot of other people, to be fair, take a, take a leave of absence from your career, maybe work on a political campaign or volunteer or serve your country. Uh, and... Uh, Thousands of people do this uh, for a year or two years or eight years, and it was amazing. It was incredible. Is it as, it's, it's as sexy as it sounds. Like I work in the White House. No, I mean you. Uh, really? You didn't well, use that you, as a pickup line yeah. ever. <laughs> you, uh, you, you know, it's a very small place. The White House is actually a very small place, and you, uh, you share an office with incredible, you know, five or six incredible people, just kind of in this tiny room, mm -hmm. uh, room after room, um, and uh, and it was awesome. I, I, you're very humbled walking in there every day. I understand you uh, served as. Assistant or associate? Associate. Associate Director of Public Engagement. Yes. That sounds like a fancy name for a party planner. Oh, what I is, wish. What, it, what, it, what is the Associate Director of Public <laughs> Engagement? What did the job entail? Sir? So there are several uh, Associate Directors of Public Engagement. It used to be called the Office of Public Liaison under previous administrations. It's basically an outreach office. So okay. um, I uh, headed up, um, among a few other things, um, outreach to young people, for example. So, you know, the President was really big on making sure that young people know what he's working on, whether it's Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal or Pell Grants or whatever, and I got to put meetings together and help kind of bring folks to the table. It was really cool, man. It was the exact opposite. Did you spend much time with the that. President? 
Like, did you like to have meetings with them? Or uh, like that? You know, so this goes back to the White House being a small place. You you would uh, see him in the hallway sometimes. I mean, I, I remember I had a uh, there was an executive order I was working on, which is a piece of paper basically he has to sign. Uh, and the two weeks you before, wrote up an executive order. No, there was a huge. <laughs> I'm nowhere near smart enough for that. There's, there's literally, a, like, a, agencies are put together to, to send this thing through a huge process. Yeah. Um, but I was the idiot who had to brief him before he signed it. Uh, as a president, uh, this is what you're about to sign. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he knows what he has to sign, but, but okay. you, you brief him for a little bit. And the two weeks before, kind of nerve-wracking, and I'm thinking, you know, I, 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 I'm the son of immigrants. My grandparents marched with Gandhi. This is incredible that I have a couple of years where I'm, I'm getting to do this. And, uh, you know, you see the president the week or two before. You see other people around the hallway. And, and I didn't have any public meetings. I was focused on this one briefing. You know, didn't shave for those two weeks. Didn't really get it. But the night before, I shave. I get a haircut. I get my suit pressed. And I walk into the Oval Office when it's time to brief the president. I set one foot in. Uh, and the first thing he says to me, and I'm thinking, like, really, I'm, I'm excited to tell everybody about whatever's going to happen. And I, I take one foot in, in the Oval Office, and he looks at me, and he goes, hey, look who decided to shave today. <laughs> and I was like, man. Doesn't miss a trick. No, that's... <laughs> Very humbling. That's how Very perceptive... <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, of course, I was like, I can't tell my mom this story. Yeah. There's no way. She'd be horrified. Well, thanks so much for being yeah. here, man. Good thanks, to see man. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Designated Survivor airs Wednesday nights on ABC CalPen, everybody.